Here are the seven habits I did to help me break into data analytics despite having no prior experience. Number one, I built a real world project every single month. And here's the deal, you guys. Exercises, they're great. Tutorials, fantastic. But they don't really help you learn all that much in the end compared to how much you're going to learn via projects. I like to think of projects like baby swim lessons. Have you seen these videos on like TikTok or Instagram Reels? Where they take these babies and they like throw them into the water and the baby's like trying to like do everything they can to survive. That's how projects are going to feel like uh, for you. They're going to feel really big. It's gonna feel almost like too hard of a task, but that's the exact environment you need to be in in order to learn the most. So you're gonna learn 10 times more by doing a project than you would just be doing some sort of exercises. Why is that? Well, projects are the best emulators of real world examples that you're going to face in the actual workplace. Exercises, they're quite contrived and often they're not really realistic of what you're going to face when you reach industry. Projects will also showcase your expertise to hiring managers and recruiters. So that way when your resume says, you know, you can actually do things in SQL, the recruiter says, well, prove it to me and you can show them a project that demonstrates all of your knowledge in SQL and is like, hey, look, I can actually analyze things in SQL with real world data. And this really paid off for me because one of the projects that I ended up building was a Utah Jazz project where I basically analyzed basketball data. I scraped every single shot that the Utah Jazz took for a season. I scraped it off of ESPN, their shot charts, and I analyzed the best locations for their different players to shoot and figured out, you know, if this player shoots in this location, it's worth this amount. And I analyzed what players took the best shots in what areas. So for example, a corner three from like Tabo Sethlosha was really worth a lot because he made a lot of those versus like a Rudy Gobert dunk was worth a lot as well. It was really interesting to do this project. I really love basketball and so it was really fun for me and I learned a whole heck of a lot because when I actually went to try to get a job with the Utah Jazz, I could say, hey, look, I've already done this project. I can already analyze jazz data. I already have results that are ready to go for you. Are you interested in hiring me? And that's how I got the job. One thing that really helped me with habit number one of building projects was having a clean way to showcase them. And that's where today's sponsor, Gamma, comes into play. Gamma makes it easy for anyone to create beautiful and effective presentations in just a matter of seconds. And honestly, I was pretty pumped when they reached out to me because I was already a paying user. Gamma is basically like AI PowerPoint, but better. And it's now my go-to for all slide deck presentations. In fact, I used it recently to create my slides for my teacher to data analyst webinar that I did not too long ago, but I've also used it to turn my data projects into a sleek presentation in just a matter of seconds. You can literally copy and paste in text or upload an existing file and tell it to make a beautiful presentation for you. Remember, the work that you do is only as impactful as the way that you present and communicate it, and Gamma makes that quick and easy. So try the Gamma magic for yourself at Gamma.app. All right, habit number two that I did was read five quick pages a day because I believe reading is one of, if not the best way to learn. I feel like the amount of knowledge that I can take in and retain by reading is pretty much unmatched. And when I was first breaking into data analytics, I read a lot of books. In fact, at the time, I was a chemical lab technician, and at the company I worked for, we had what was called a chemometrician. Now, a chemometrician is just a fancy word for a data scientist that deals with chemistry data, but I was really interested in this role. So I went to the local library, and I checked out a chemometrics book from the library. And I can't even remember which one, and I can't tell you how boring it was, but it helped me learn. It helped me learn the language. It helped me know what chemometricians do, what we look for as data scientists in the chemistry field. And I learned a lot from that book and it served me really well as I eventually became a data scientist for the small company I worked for and a data scientist for ExxonMobil, which deals with a bunch of chemistry because that's what oil and gas is, is just a big chemistry problem. When I was doing novel research on fault detection and writing an academic paper on it, like literally doing new science, theoretically. I checked out this book from the library. It's called Fault Detection and Diagnosis in Industrial Systems. Yes, it's a real page burner, but that helped me know what research had already been done on the field and where I could kind of innovate and try some new things with some new machine learning algorithms and all sorts of different things. But it helped me learn a ton by reading. When I was working on data visualization at ExxonMobil, I actually read this book twice, Visual Explanations by Edward R. Tufte. And it helped me become a better dashboard maker. It helped me 
become a better communicator to my stakeholders because I knew the power of data visualization. When I was teaching data engineering at MIT, I basically used this book right here, The Fundamentals of Data Engineering, as my Bible. And I can't even tell you how often it saved my butt and how much I learned from it. Every time I need to learn anything personally, I go and find a good book. So if you need a good list of books to read, I just did a whole episode on that. So you want to check that out in the show notes down below, or you can click somewhere up here if you're watching on YouTube. Okay, the third habit I did was I started seeing data everywhere around me. And what I mean by that is I started seeing the real applications of where data was being used. For example, when I open up my Netflix account and I see what it recommends next, that's actually just a machine learning problem. Even more simple than that, when I open up my phone and I go to the ESPN app and I take a look at the box scores or I look at the game cast, I can see all sorts of different charts there and try to understand what those charts are saying. I just basically was looking for a real life example of where they're using data and where they're using charts. So sports, magazines, news, movies, these can be a really good example of where charts are being used. And once you start looking for them, you honestly start to see more of them and you start to realize, wow, this is how the data is being used. This is probably where they got this data. This is how they analyze this data. And seeing those real life examples just in your day to day life is going to help you become a better data practitioner because you're going to start to realize, oh, this is how I've seen this before. Or you can say, I've seen someone do something similar to this in the past in this newspaper or this magazine magazine or something like that. I promise you, if you start looking, you're going to start seeing it everywhere. The fourth habit I did was I started sharing my learnings on LinkedIn every single week. And honestly, this shouldn't be too scary for you right now, because if you start building a project every month, you start reading five pages every day, you start looking for data around you, you have stuff that you can share on LinkedIn. And now you might be thinking, oh, this is cringe. I don't know. Like, I don't know what people are are going to think about me and I don't want people to judge me. Well, here's what I'll tell you, okay? First off, hardly anyone cares. Hardly anyone's on LinkedIn in the first place. It's not like the most popular platform. It's not like it's Instagram or something like that. And I promise you that the reward of putting yourself out there far exceeds any costs here. Now you might be worried that oh, no one's going to care. But I promise you, one person cares. There's someone who's one step behind you who's really interested in what you have to say. For example, if you're going to go out there and you're going to learn a little bit about data engineering, there's someone who's curious about what you're learning in this book because they haven't bought this book yet. There's someone, I guarantee, one step behind you who's interested in what you have to say. And now you might be thinking, well, that's just one person. Well, here's the truth. You only need one person. When I was working at ExxonMobil, I was sharing what I was learning in my master's degree. I was sharing what I was learning in my reading. And I was posting on it on LinkedIn. I was amazed that I could just share stuff on LinkedIn and people would actually read. And one of the people who read was a VP of a private equity firm. And one day he reached out to me, he sent me a DM and he said, Hey, I want to hire you as a consultant. I want to hire you as a freelancer. That was so eye opening to me because we talked for a little bit. We talked about a rate and it was more than I was getting paid at Exxon. I was like, this is amazing. Now he ended up ghosting me and I never worked for him. But the point here is it inspired me to be like, oh, I'm really valuable. I'm a smart guy. And if he wants to hire me, other people would probably want to hire me. And that's what led me to quitting my job and becoming a freelance consultant and doing all the stuff that I do now on YouTube and on LinkedIn and on my podcast and Data Analytics Accelerator. So if I had never would have posted on LinkedIn and he never would have DM'd me, I don't know if I'd even be talking to you here on YouTube and the podcast. If you don't know where to start, just answer one question. What did you learn today? And heck, you could even take your most recent project, create a slide deck in Gamma, and then turn that slide deck into a LinkedIn carousel post, which Gamma does automatically for you. So we've already got the first post already set up for you guys. There's no excuses. Habit number five, I applied for jobs consistently, not when I just felt ready. Here's the truth. If you wait to apply for jobs until you feel ready, you're never going to feel ready. I promise you, the imposter syndrome that you feel in the data field, it never really goes away fully. It just kind of dims down. But I still feel imposter syndrome constantly. And I think most of the people who are like me still do as well. So you need to apply for jobs before you feel ready. And that's just how it's going to be. For example, as a freelancer one time, I applied for a D3 developer job before I even knew D3. Now I got the job and I learned it quickly, but I did not know D3 before I took that job. Now that is kind of scary, but it also really pushed me to learn D3. And I also got a job that I really wasn't qualified 
qualified for. And if I honestly had waited until I felt qualified, I probably would have never gotten the job. So if you don't feel ready to apply for data jobs, apply for data jobs. You're ready. Habit number six, I sent one to three cold DMs every single week. Yes, really. I promise you I did. So if you don't know what a cold DM is, it's basically a cold direct message or like a cold email to someone in industry that you don't know, but you want to know. For example, I DM'd Jepson Taylor back then. He went by Ben in 2017. Why? Because he was a chemical engineer like me who had turned data scientist and that's the exact path I wanted to follow. Now, I never worked for Jepson, but honestly, my relationship with him is something that I think is really important and his example helped me in my career. Just knowing that there was someone who had done something similar to me in the same area as me and he talked to me was a big deal. Another example, before I landed my internship with the Utah Jazz, I emailed the head of analytics at the Jazz like three times with like zero response. On the fourth time, he sent a response and said, sorry, don't have anything. Anyways, I just kept peppering them until they finally gave me a job. And you can do the exact same thing as well. The last example I'll tell you is before I joined ExxonMobil, I DM'd a data scientist there who had a really cool job title. And I was like, you have the coolest job title ever. How should I do it? And he shared some really valuable advice. I came in clutch when I was actually applying for and interviewing with ExxonMobil. And then actually when I was at ExxonMobil as well, when I actually became a full-time employee, he was so helpful and he really vouched for me in my career. And I'd honestly consider us still friends. So if nothing else, sending cold DMs gets you friends. That's a win, right? The seventh habit that I did was I attended analytics meetups, webinars, or events every single month. And something magical happens with these like events. Number one, I think it's just like time on your calendar that you're like, okay, I have to go to this thing at this time. I think a lot of us, including me, don't really prioritize something if it's not on our calendar and events just happen to be on our calendar and we kind of respect the time that they take up. I remember walking into my first data conference and I didn't feel like I belonged at all. I didn't know anyone there. I really didn't know what they were talking about. I was just kind of there listening, but I feel like I learned so much that weekend from going to this event. In fact, I walked into this guy's talk and he was talking about how he used R to predict allergy levels using machine learning. And I don't even think I understood anything he said at all, but I was like, this is so cool. I was like, this is amazing that you can do this. And I, I probably learned what R was that day. I might've learned a little bit about like time forecasting that day. I don't really know if I learned anything that stuck in my brain, but I was like the right place at the right time, learning the right stuff. And if you do that enough, you start to pick things up and you start to understand. And also you start to meet people and those people can have a really big impact on your life because they can help you find jobs. They can help you find learning resources. It's just like we have to get offline sometimes to get real world results that actually matter. Online is great. Watching YouTube is great. Sending LinkedIn cold messages is great. Posting on LinkedIn is great. But sometimes you got to get in person to actually get some real results. So I challenge you to try these seven habits. If you enjoyed them and you want to start practicing them in your career, I made you a little habit tracker that you can print out and watch your progress grow. You can get it for free at datacareerjumpster.com slash seven habits or in the show notes down below. Thank you guys so much for watching.